Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by the Standards Weekly Check-In. I'm Colin, behind the camera, it's Heavy Metal Dylan. What's up? Today we're going to be flipping through some new arrivals, recently priced records, getting into some staff picks, and answering some viewer questions at the end of the video. As always, see anything you like, you can DM us on Instagram, give the shop a ring, or just cruise by. We're open 11 to 8, seven days a week. Without further ado, we'll get into some staff picks. Uh, this, is a, this is just a fun one to come in. You don't see the, the OG press of Plantasia too often. Not gonna lie to you folks, cover's kinda haggard. It's got some uh, some wear, but you know, hey, you gotta let people know you got an OG. But the vinyl is like perfect. Look at that. It was, uh, I think it was literally unplayed. It was in shrink, but in a really ugly, nasty way, so I had to take the shrink off. Sorry. But it has the booklet too. Cool, right? Yeah, minty vinyl. The fan What's in the booklet? In the booklet? Yeah. It teaches you how to teach to talk to your plants. Got yeah, like a, a sad, sad guy. You never seen my uh, my back tattoos? It's just all these drawings. I, I've seen that one. That's on your the back of your thigh. Yeah. And then I think this one's on the back of your tricep. That's like on your tricep actually. Right. Yeah. And then that's uh, uh. Let me see. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, that's on your that's on your shin. Yeah. yeah. So my whole my I have a very I have a, a Plantasia themed. Uh, Back tattoo. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that was a that was the source of it. I didn't know. I thought that this is like you drawing it. Or you ever you ever know why my aim screen name was Plant Man Seven Sixty? Oh, because I thought you were copying me because mine was Plantera. Oh no, I mean it is a uh, good ferns and a planter of <laughs> dirt. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I get it. Yeah, I got yeah. it. What are you listening to? Oh, uh, today if you came in, it was a weird day for you, I'm sure, because uh, I was just blasting both uh, Kanye. I was also 808s. So I forgot to bring it up, but uh, the first two Kanye West here as displayed reminded me of being in a uh, Mayor Mason 2003 and four. Yes. And uh, you know, it brought me back to going to the Big Five for no reason and Mayor Mesa and just shopping in there. You know, Mira Mesa, I've never known to be a bad place. Yeah. Always a good time. It's always a great time. I think I was going there around then to practice, practice around there. So we were probably both in Mira Mesa around 2000. Three to five. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Different lives. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shall we flip through some records? Sure. Oh, hey, before we flip through, um, you probably saw the flip through video that I posted earlier today. We just went, we had like a metric ton of uh, used reissues come in recently. I'll show you some highlights after flipping through some new arrivals, but basically watch that vid, you'll see everything. Anyway, let's get into it. I, I'm doing my, my first Instagram poll. I'm in the middle of my Instagram brackets. Is my shirts getting picked? What's your what's your choice? My choices were um, the Panther pocket print with the back that says, I think the standards logo with right. the words around it. It's in the running. Um, I You know, it's fucked up. I was torn between the R2 shirt uh -huh. and the me you crew sure. yeah well those are those are fighting right now i know i know it's there in the bracket. it's messed up i like the r2 one because i, I want to i want to get bigger sizes in that one because yeah. i have the me you in the sizes i want all right where but that's the glory of democracy is it could go either way i just, really i just want to do the comfort colors upgrade of course and maybe like freak the colors a little bit on this or that uh-huh but I'm saying. we'll see <laughs> we'll see what wins yeah. but yeah so if you're re if you're listening to this i believe the final round of what shirt we're gonna reprint will be up on the Instagram stories. I've never done a poll before. It's so exciting. People are like voting. There's like hundreds of votes. Hundreds. Hundreds. Damn. Like I would expect like, a lot. like five. Yeah, five and ten. Yeah, me. And, I know. You me all, and like the other five people that you yeah, know, know personally. You're 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 always doubting me and underestimating. I don't doubt me. you. No. No, there's people really participating. It's really no, nice. I, I do. I did see it. It's real. It's <laughs> very cool to see people caring. Um, so yeah, we'll have a new run of shirts soon, and it's it's democratically voted. I want to reprint that um, 3D design, the one with like the S that's like tilted at you a little bit. The S oh, you want to redo that one again? Yeah, with like the old English on the back. Yeah, it's my favorite shirt I've ever done. And then no more reprints. You're not gonna reprint any of the other old shirts? No, not for a while at least. Maybe in oh, like it's... maybe for the 15 year anniversary. Ah. But, but that, but yeah, I think my my prediction is R2 is gonna win. Viewer questions. This is the part of the vid where we answer the questions left in last week's YouTube comment section leading off. Alex K, uh, we were talking, getting into some soundtrack discussion the other day, the other week. He wanted to give some shout outs to the Crow soundtrack. Mm. It's the one where Pantera covers Poison Idea. Oh, okay. And the Mortal Kombat soundtrack. Toasty! Like Napalm Death on it. Those, are, those were bangers. Yeah, the, the 90s, just like a bunch of arbitrary songs on the soundtrack. That's its own, that's a, that's a, a video unto itself. 
a lot of legends there. You know what was one of my favorites? Soundtracks? Yeah. Uh, no. I got two. I got two wacky ones for you. Um, the Airhead soundtrack. Oh, okay. Which features a uh, prong covering the Stranglers. And um, the Anthrax John Bush hair covering the Smiths. There was and there was um, uh, the SFW soundtrack. You ever watched that movie? Like some like edgelord 90s movie no nah, maybe not some people will probably be mad that they call it an edgelord movie but sorry <laughs> um uh, yeah there's a guar song on there as a guar <laughs> super fan i was really into i had to get it because there's an exclusive guar song and uh there's also it was my first time hearing marilyn manson mm. i think he had get your gun which is like early like first era marilyn manson first mm. album era it's a wacky one i know a lot of people like uh the batman forever soundtrack too <laughs> i know people have our, our fans uh, uh nick cave is on there oh and uh, you two have a big song. Mazzy Star, mm -hmm. PJ Harvey, mm -hmm. Brandy, mm -hmm. Seal. Mm -hmm. Wacky soundtrack. You like that one? It's a celebrated one. Yeah. Emblematic of how uh, what a what a wild world of uh, ni '90s soundtracks could be. I think uh, the best '90s soundtrack is like late '90s, and you might want to consider it 2000s if I can remember it correctly. Mm -hmm. The Digimon the Movie soundtrack Ooh. featuring Less Than Jake, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones, the Digimon rap song that only appears in the movie, as far as I know. <laughs> it only appears in the movie. Well, it's like the intro theme to the movie, like the title intro. Gotcha. And it's like it's like two minutes long. <laughs> while like um, while like literal like stills of the Pokemon are just floating around with names like They're Digimon. Yeah, they're cool. What did I say? Pokemon. I don't know why, how you could confuse. I'm sorry. The digital monsters, not pocket monsters. I'm really sorry, you guys. But um, yeah, the the Digimon movie soundtrack, and um, no, that's it. That's like the only. That's the only good soundtrack. That's the only good soundtrack I know of. And Greg Hicks bringing up uh, the subject of uh, banger debuts with zero skips brings up Metallica, Kill 'Em All, Pistols, Nevermind the Bullocks, and uh, Appetite for Destruction. Of course, I'm not arguing any of those. Uh, here's my here's a, I have a I have a weird stipulation. Check this out. I think uh, I I like the idea of debut albums that overshadow the rest of the catalog, mm. and there has to be a rest of the catalog. So like the Pistols kind of doesn't count because it's like. Yeah, it's the best debut album, but it's also their only album that really counts. Uh, or uh, Kill 'Em All, you know, they don't really just state. I like Kill 'Em All the best, but that probably wouldn't be a lot of people's definitive album, you know. Mm -hmm. Even like uh, Ramones debut, I wouldn't call that the definitive Ramones album. Like if I had to make an, yeah, if I had to make a quick pitch for someone, like, hey, where do I start with the Ramones? Yeah, sure, start with the first one. But I wouldn't say it's it's like overshadows the rest of the catalog. Whereas Appetite for Destruction is exactly that. It is a flawless record, and it is so hard to beat that it just you know puts every let, renders everything else they did kind of useless. I'll get you I'll get you with a couple of mine. You ready? Yeah. And you and yeah, you can't just pick good out like you know you can't say oh the first damn record. Yeah, it's a perfect record, but. They have a lot of perfect records. I know. So it keeps going. I'm trying to think now. No. I know. It gets harder, right? Yeah. You can't just name bands you like. Mm -hmm. It gets complicated. Um, I think uh, the first Motley Crue is... You could like the yeah. first Motley Crue record and basically nothing else from them in here. You're, you're yeah, fine. I feel you on that. Yeah. Um, this is going to be a crazy one. You ready for Left Field? Left Field is coming at you. You're not coming at Left Field. Left yes. Field is coming at you. First Leonard Skinner. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's like a really good record. Yeah. You got the first Skinner, you're kind of you're kind of one and done. Okay. That's all I could come up with. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> and I don't agree with Appetite. That definitely. Yeah, no, Appetite's a good one. Yeah, because it's, it's all over after that. Like, it's as good perfect. as, like, uses your illusions. As good as those albums are. Yeah. That's... It's... Oh, okay. I'll give you one. Oh. Strokes. Is this it? Yeah. Oh. I, was, I think I was like joking about that, but no, really. That's, you don't like Room on Fire? I like a lot of their records, but you know, that everything that that band is, is that first record. And that's kind of a big part of being a debut. Like I, I would say like, you know, the Bad Brains debut, perfect album. Everything's there, but... Everything after that is also really good. I know, and yeah. if you have like, and it doesn't, if you're like, if you like Eye Against Eye, and you didn't like Rock for Light, I would get it. Yeah. You know, but whereas like, if you like use your illusion, you don't like appetite, you're a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Kind of want to meet you. Because <laughs> <laughs> like- You're an odd duck. When, when you I, got some wild takes. <laughs> when I first heard the, first heard this question, what mm -hmm. popped up was Van Halen 1. Right. Great debut. Perfect debut. But also, 
84 and Vinny and two and I know. God damn it. Yeah, so no, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't overshadow the rest of their catalog. It's just an amazing record. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't even call it my first Van Halen record. Though I'm not mad at all if that's your favorite. I would Van say, Halen. okay, if I'm gonna shoot from the hip. Shooting from the hip. I'm gonna say hundred gex. Yes. Even though they only really have a debut album. Yeah, but well, so they could top it. That's the other thing. Yeah, so this okay. the, the gex story has not yet been written. Like yeah, yeah, no, there's not it's not done. Uh, it's like I can't say Blue Album technically. Yeah. Um, it has been zero video since Weezer has been mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, I got, I got my third. Yes. Official verdict. Uh, ben and Malcolm down. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's that's all you need. And but respect to the first four albums and the singles. Of but, course. I don't know. The first New York Dolls count. See, to me, they're too short-lived, though. Yeah, I know, right? Fuck, I don't it know. It is a perfect, that is a I perfect... I keep thinking of bands that have, like, literally just one album. <laughs> like, I don't know. The first Fleetwood Mac, I think, is better than Rumors. Um, <laughs> you don't think that's true at all. You're literally just looking at records. I, uh, you know, but I also like the Speed EP, but that's only, that's it. They only got an EP. If you have any questions you would like to see answered on next week's video, leave a comment in the YouTube section down below. We'll get to it next week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Peace. Fucking weirdo. Yeah. Kind of want to meet you. Frame on Porsche. This time is expensive. Found myself spending some extensive.